How would you like it if your love life was determined by an algorithm created by two economists in the 1960s? This is a hypothetical scenario that Professor Gale and Shapley tried to solve with their Nobel Prize winning matchmaking algorithm that actually ended up being used to match medical students across the country into their desired residency positions. Today, the match algorithm is a well-known and potentially feared part of the residency application process that is honestly fairly complex. So in this video, I'm going to try and break it down into simple terms, how the match algorithm works, and a few pointers that I've learned while trying to prepare for the match and making my rank list. So if we go over to my iPad, I have a sample match scenario. So we have four applicants, John, Sally, Jim, and Sarah. And these four applicants are all applying to residency programs amongst three different hospitals. We have hospital A, B, and C. So the way the match algorithm works is it's actually an applicant uh, favoring algorithm. What that means is the goal is to try to match the applicant first at their most desired program. So a few pointers when, we, when you're making your rank list is applicants should really try to list as many different schools in their rank list as possible. And actually programs should do the same if they're trying to fill all of their spots. However, this is a binding contract. And if you rank at a program, you have to go there for residency. So if there is a school that you interview at and you really do not want to go to that program and you rather not match than go to that program, then it might be a situation where you actually don't add that program to your match list. Also, you should really only rank programs that you interviewed at and gotten an interview from because schools are generally only going to rank applicants that they've actually conducted an interview with. So let's take a look at this hypothetical situation. So as you can see here, we have the four applicants and their choice in order of where they want to go. Now assume that uh, each of these three programs actually only has uh, two spots, we're going to say. And I have a, a little color code key in the top right corner, and the different options are going to be someone either tentative met tentatively matches at the program, they definitively match at the program, or they don't match. So the way to work is the algorithm is going to go through all four applicants. And in the real thing, it's many more than this, but we're just doing a short example so you can start to understand the concept. So we'll start with John. Now, John lists Hospital A as the place that he wants to go the most. That's his first program on his rank list. So we're going to go and see if John could potentially match at Hospital A. Now, Hospital A did put John in their rank list, although he's number three. So it's possible that he might match there. So we're going to circle John in yellow, saying he tentatively matches there for now. And then we're going to move on to Sally, and we're going to come back if needed. Okay. Now, Sally ranked Hospital A number one, and Hospital A also ranked Sally number one. If that's the case, and there's two spots, that means Sally is automatically going to match. So now that we know that Sally matched there, we can circle Sally in green, and she's definitely going to match at Hospital A. I should have made those colors more distinct, but that's the green. Um, okay, so Sally matches at Hospital A, but John still is tentatively matching there. So now we're going to move on to Jim. Well, Jim ranks Hospital A number one as well. It's his first choice. But it looks like Jim is not even on Hospital A's rank list. So Jim cannot match at Hospital A, so we're going to cross him out here. Then Jim also ranked Hospital B second. And no one's currently tentatively matched there. So we're going to put yellow uh, for Jim and say that he is tentatively matching at Hospital B. All right, moving on to Sarah. Sarah ranked Hospital C first, and if you can see here, Sarah is actually not listed on Hospital C's rank list, so she's not going to match there. Um, however, she listed Hospital A second, and she is listed on Hospital A's rank list. So because there's two spots available and Sarah is ranked number two and she has it on her rank list, she is going to match at Hospital A, which means that John is actually going to get kicked out of his match spot and he's no longer tentatively matched there. So it's important to note that even though John had his first choice as Hospital A 
and Sarah had her second choice as Hospital A. Because Sarah was ranked higher on Hospital A's list, she gets preference to take that spot. So now that John was just removed as a tentative match from Hospital A, we're going to have to cross out John matching at Hospital A. We're going to say that Sarah matched there, Sally matched there, and we're going to move on to see if John can get find a match. So John's second rank was Hospital B. And if you see here, Hospital B has John ranked as their second slot. So that means he's in their top two. And because that's his next choice, he's definitively going to match at Hospital B. Now, because there is nobody left, it looks like Jim is going to match at Hospital B as well. And so we're going to change him to a green circle. So as you can see here, Hospital C actually is not going to match anybody because they did not list Sarah as on their list. And even though Sarah was their first choice, if she's not there, she's not going to match there. And so what this shows is that for both programs and applicants, because if you don't rank as an applicant a lot of programs, it could also end up hurting you. The fewer programs you rank, the less your chances are at finding a match. And for programs, the fewer applicants they make, they might have spots that go unfilled. Now, if a hospital has a spot that goes unfilled, they can actually be a part of something called the SOAP. And if you're interested, I'll make another video describing the SOAP in detail. But basically, for hospitals or programs that have unfilled slots and for applicants that don't actually find a match in that year, they have an opportunity to enter the SOAP and try to interview and get a position. It might be in a different specialty that they were originally applying to, or maybe in the same specialty at a program they didn't originally apply to. There's a lot of different factors that come into play with the SOAP, but it's a chance to actually find a match in that same year. And so what happens is usually a couple days before the actual match, which is in March, it's March 18th this year, the applicants that matched will find out they match, but they won't find out where. And the applicants that didn't match will also be notified that they can enter and are el eligible for the SOAP so that they have a couple of days to try and match into a program. So I hope you found that video helpful in explaining the match. It's a little bit more complex than this, and I'm actually entering the couples match this year, which is even more complex. Instead of ranking, let's say, your top one through 10 programs, you have to make 50, potentially 100, or even more combinations because you have to make different combinations with the partner that you're entering the match with. So if you want to see a video on that, let me know in the comments below, and I'll definitely make a video on it and break it down in detail. I definitely think it's been more stressful. People say if you can survive the couples match, you could survive anything. I didn't understand what they meant when they first said that. I was like, oh, it can't be that bad. Let me tell you, it definitely adds to the stress, but I think it also is a good opportunity to get on the same page with your partner, really talk about what's important and figure out a plan together. So I'm super excited. I'm hoping March 18th goes well for both of us and hopefully it goes well for all the fourth years that are matching this year. Uh, if you're enjoying this content, please like and subscribe. I'm on the journey to 10,000 subscribers this year and I'll be sharing my journey as a medical student who is entering residency. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.